we we'll touch on on what this there is there is a nexus in the conversation of for tonight, the plans f uh, and the agitation of the movement of the people, the ANSAS protesters, the issues of national security. There is a connection in all of that, and the stance of the federal government saying we will not allow uh, this sort of situation to reoccur. So we're getting uh, the expertise of uh, Mr. Austin, a retired senior police officer. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Iwa, for joining us tonight. Let's begin the conversation by uh, giving us your view on the stance of the federal government when the president says the government will ensure that they prevent future NSAS protests culminating into destruction of properties. Thank you for having me, uh, Sheung, uh, on this program. Uh, we need to understand that the NSAS protest was spontaneous. There were indications already in the air amongst communities, amongst uh, several youth, uh, young people in the country that something was about to happen. So it was a spontaneous reaction to the series of, of uh, complaints against police, uh, police brutality and uh, police misuse of firearms and uh, police mistreatment of citizens. As it is now, those indicators have been taken care of by the government. The government uh, made sure that all the demands of the NSAS protesters were taken care of immediately. And so I do not see where uh, uh, the, the so-called emerging NSAS uh, protest is going to come again because uh, the indicators are not there. But it does look, uh, Mr. Iwa, that the agitation that we saw in those young Nigerians uh, was more than police brutality. They were also asking for good governance. For example, the movement of the people led by Sean Kuti, the musician and rights activist, they are asking for good governance. So it does look like we might be seeing a return of such street protest. In fact, they said in that press conference today that they will be protesting in Abuja and Lagos. Yeah, of course. Um, we know very well that uh, the end protest, uh, the end SARS protest, was a tipping point. It was uh, a tipping point of a lot of issues that had been on ground, including good governance and uh, police governance system. However, uh, this is a democracy. I mean, anybody can come out and protest on whatever they want to do. The movement of the people uh, should be a democratic organization, and so uh, they have um, all. Uh, they need their rights to protest whatever system of governance uh, that they want to see in the country. So I don't see any, any fears or any problem uh, with uh, the emerging uh, political movement or social political movement of the movement, movement of the people. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing for this country that people should speak out uh, with regards to governance and what is happening to our daily lives. How easy will it be for the government when they say they plan to stop such future protests, street protests? Would it be very easy for the government and how would they be able to go about stopping such protests? Well, it's very simple to stop such protests. I mean, by addressing the issues, the underlying issues that give birth to these protests in the first place. When government addresses these issues, then there won't be any reason for any protest again. People are talking about good governance. If the government institutes processes and systems that will usher in good governance for this country, I don't see any reason why anybody should protest. If the government ushers in uh, a police reform that focuses on accountability, that focuses on police is respecting the rights of our citizens, there yeah. won't be any reason for, uh, for any, uh, any protest again. So the indicators are really not there now for anybody to come out and say uh, he wants to protest. But in the face of the law, when government says they will prevent street protest, we saw as, uh, what uh, uh, Sean Kuti was saying earlier, uh, in uh, that press conference that his family was being harassed because they actually changed the venue uh, from uh, uh, the African shrine to Kalakuta uh, 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 at uh, Kalakuta Museum. 
um, it does look like there is a movement to stopping or making sure that people do not go to the street. In the face of the law, how easy will this be? Well, I'm sure that um, uh, the uh, movement for uh, the people uh, that the security agencies may have uh, some information that we are not uh, privy to uh, to ensure that um, such um, a meeting don't take place. Uh, however, uh, what I think is that um, perhaps uh, security agencies talk that uh, it will also be an avenue for miscrimes to come and gather uh, and then begin to agitate uh, another form of agitation. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think that um, uh, we have any problem right now because uh, government uh, as it is, even with uh, the meeting that was held today, government is focused on addressing the core issues that have created the problems we find ourselves today. Let's take a breather, and during that break, we, we, we should be able to hear from Sean Kuti. We're expecting him to join us at some point on the program tonight to look, know the agenda of the movement of the people, which they say may culminate into a political party. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. The agitation and uh, the agenda of the movement of the people, a resurgence of uh, the Fela Kuti uh, political agenda. And, of course, uh, his son, Sean Kuti, might be joining us tonight on the program. Of course, we have from our Abuja studio, Mr. Austin Ewa, a retired senior police officer. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let me get your view. Uh, there seems to be uh, um, some kind of mistrust between the people and the police or the government uh, in general. How can you, uh, or how do you suppose that the government can bring back the trust or can build trust and bridge, uh, bridge that gap between the people and the government again? I think um, that, um, that bridge was late today at uh, the national security meeting uh, when the president uh, say that um, um, from now on going forward uh, communities traditional rulers youth leaders uh, security agencies will uh, will we 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 form an integrated approach towards providing security uh, to each other one of the ways of building trust is engagement, engaging with people constantly, looking at the underlying issues, the underlying challenges that people face, and bringing together, harnessing resources to deal with, this, to deal with these problems uh, in a more uh, accountable, in a more empowering uh, way. So I think that that bridge was laid today by the president uh, through uh, making sure that every facet of our community uh, was involved in providing safety and security. And, you know, the, the good thing about uh, this kind of uh, structure is that it creates accountability between all the participating uh, organizations or, 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 or persons that are involved in it. So with accountability, you are able to question, you are able to respect individual rights, you are able to recognize uh, the challenges of uh, different facets of the communities that we come together to deal with it. Through that method, we'll be able to build some trust. But it's going to take time. It's not something that can be achieved within a short period of time. Government does not want a return of uh, protests to the streets. But how can you manage, you have an experience in policing in Nigeria, how can the government or the police manage, should there be a return of street protests? Well, it's through engagement, like we have said, through engagement. Already, government and the police need to understand the factors that lead to protest and to nip them in the bud. If we know these factors, if we know the underlying challenges that uh, people come out to protest for and government addresses these challenges, I think that we'll be able to contain whatever uh, protests that may emerge in the, in the, in the future. Uh, and, and I think that is the approach that government uh, is, is taking now. All right. uh, before now, 
uh, the approach was like, you know, uh, people just coming out to protest and nobody cared about them, nobody listened to them, uh, nobody took a particular interest in the economic welfare of people, in, in the social conditions of people. But now, uh, from what we get, and even from what the president uh, talked about uh, involving youth in, in some socioeconomic activities, I think that, um, that uh, when these issues are addressed, uh, one after the other, or in a collective in a collective way, uh, we'll be able to uh, manage these situations. But of course, All right. thank uh, the retired AIG of police, Austin Iwa, uh, who uh, joined us and spoke to us from Abuja. Thank you indeed for joining us tonight.